In this example, we're asked to find the volume of a wedge cut from a sphere by two planes, so the radius of the sphere is assumed to be some number a, that's a positive constant, uh, cut by two planes that intersect along a diameter at an angle of pi over 6. So I've started by sketching the sphere for us here. Um, the next thing that we should probably do is draw some planes. Now there are many different ways to draw planes that cut through the diameter of a sphere, but let's, before we draw the planes, let's remember how we want to build this sphere in terms of integration and spherical coordinates, because again, anytime we see a sphere and we're asked to do something that involves an integral, we're probably guessing that a volume is going to involve, involve an integral. Um, whenever we have this situation, we should think, well, let's try spherical coordinates. And remember, um, the way that we build this sphere is that the row builds out from the center, the pole, um, out to the radius in the positive z direction, so from 0 to a. So row goes from 0 to a. And then to build the sphere, the next thing that happens is that the angle phi varies in uh, from 0 to pi in such a way that it traces, it, it kind of rotates out that ray that we just made um, in the direction from the positive z-axis where it started through the positive x-axis and then down. And so phi traces out this uh, kind of fan shape from 0 to pi. And now to create the rest of the sphere, we would rotate this all the way around from 0 to 2 pi in the theta direction. But now is where we can take advantage of our spherical coordinates to build the situation that we're told that we have in this, in this uh, problem, right? So we're told that two planes intersect at an angle of pi over 6. So since we've drawn this much already, let's assume that one of the planes is the xz plane because we're not told what the planes are. Let's pick planes that are going to that are going to fit in with our coordinate system, right? So here's one of the planes. I'll call this capital pi 1. That's plane 1. And then I want to cut this wedge with another plane that makes an angle of pi over 6, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this plane that we've just cut our, you know, half cut. Notice I haven't drawn the back side of this cut here, but that's okay. Um, I'm kind of working knowing where I'm going here, but let's take this wedge and let's just rotate it by an angle of pi over 6. We know that that's what we want anyway, right? So let theta vary from 0 to pi over 6, and then what's going to happen? Well, what's going to be left here is, again, it's hard to kind of draw this, but you end up with a wedge of your sphere, okay? A wedge of your sphere that opens at this angle, and notice what happens. The, the pink or magenta fan that I've rotated around here, this intersects, this lives on a plane, I should say, that intersects the other plane that we already had, okay, intersects along the z-axis, which is a diameter of our sphere, so that's a diameter, check, um, and we built it so that it creates the proper angle, check, and notice that there's another wedge of, of this sphere out here, Right? There's actually four wedges, but two of them, the front and the back, are the same size. Those are the ones that we want. The other two, on the right and left-hand side, those are larger wedges. We can see just by looking at the picture I drew. Um, but even if you don't trust the picture, you can, you can check that this angle is going to have to be 5 pi over 6, right, to fill out the rest of the sphere. So that, that wedge is going to be bigger, and we want the volume of this smaller wedge. And so really what we need to do is just integrate up the volume element um, with these boundaries, and that'll give us the volume of this smaller wedge of the sphere. Okay, so for a problem like this, the setup is actually where most of the work is done. It's, it's where the conceptual energy is spent, okay? You need to figure out exactly what you're being asked, and then the integral itself is going to be kind of a breeze. Um, you know, that's always a relative term. But the integral is not going to be the worst integral you've ever done. So now this region E, that's just going to be the wedge that we've made. So the volume that we want to compute, the volume of E, is a triple integral of 1 dV, where, again, E is just our wedge, and so the integral becomes the integral from 0 to pi over 6 in the theta direction, 0 to pi in the phi direction, and then 0 to A in the rho, or radius direction, and then it's 1 dV, but remember, the volume element, the volume element, here uh, is given to us. So this volume element in spherical coordinates is rho squared sine of phi 
d rho, d phi, d theta. That's dv. And so this is what needs to be integrated. This is a nice separable integral. Again, the setup here is the key. So integral 1 d theta, we can break up all the different um, all the different variables here. Integral from 0 to pi, sine of phi d phi. And then integral from 0 to a, rho squared d rho. And I'll let you guys uh, work out the details here, but this first integral is pi over 6. The second one is just 2. And the third one is 1 third a cubed. And so if we work this out, we end up with the volume of this uh, wedge region is going to be two cancels here. We have pi a cubed on top and just 9 on the bottom. And so there's the volume of the wedge of the sphere that makes an angle of pi over 6.